Yo everyone, XDoc here. Today I'm going to show you the ultimate resource guide. This is going to be how to set up camps and workshops the most efficient way possible when farming resources. So the first thing I would recommend is setting up a private world. This is just going to stop people from stealing your resources and trying to take over your workshops when you do set them up. The next thing I would recommend is building a camp near a resource extractor. For me I went with lead just for ammo but it's totally up to you which one you want to go with. I would just recommend getting at least one. The next thing to put down is going to be the firewood pile. This is going to get your wood scraps. And this is also a scoreboard item, as well as the coffee machine, which is going to produce coffee. The next few things on the list are going to be from either creator or from foundation. Um, you may have to be max level, but this is going to include the ammo production machine, the chicken coop for fertilizer, the beehive for honey, and the popcorn machine for popcorn. You can also get the fertilizer producer, which is gonna give you Brahmin milk and fertilizer. For carnivores, you could go ahead and put down a rad stag dressing station. This is just gonna give you a uh, rad stag meat over time, which you can cook up for food, and or you can eat it raw, up to you. The next thing you're gonna want is gonna be any kind of collectron. Um, do take note that whatever collectron you have at your camp, that's what is gonna collect at the workshop. So if you have something collecting nuka colas at your camp and you put down a communist collectron at a workshop, it's still going to collect nuka colas because that's what you have active at your camp. You can also get the uh, nuka candy machines and the turbo fur grenades, which would help with farming. So if you do set up some corn, some mute fruit and some potatoes, you can make vegetable starch if you put this all with purified water and uh, vegetable starch will scrap two two adhesive from one piece. So as you can see, I got 17 there and I got 34 adhesive. You could make a large farm and have that running while you're doing the resource run and that would be a decent source of adhesive. One of the main places I like to take over is gonna be Hemlock Holes. This has got three acid extractors, a silver extractor and a gold extractor. So it's just the perfect place if you're smelting down a lot of uh, a lot of ores. What you wanna do is you wanna walk up to the workshop. You wanna hit uh, the activate button to claim or you can also press this, the same button that would change your view from third person to first person. So whichever button it is on the console that you're on, that if you hold this button, it's gonna bring up the menu to claim the workshop. So after you've claimed the workshop, you are gonna see a pop-up to say that you have completed the event. This is gonna count for the daily and weekly challenges of complete events. And you're also gonna get a list of rewards. You're also gonna get rewards when you complete defends as well, as you can see here, a lot of scraps, purified water, meds, but you are always guaranteed a plan. Now this plan is gonna be a common plan, but if you need them all, it's a great way to collect them. One of the main perk cards that I would like to recommend is gonna be Contractor. Now this is gonna cost half the materials when you're setting up the workshop. So it's gonna save you materials on turrets, on uh, resource extractors, everything, generators, the lot. I would recommend also having home defense, so this is gonna allow you to place some turrets down uh, just for defending the place if you do like to defend it. A lot of the time I do just run without turrets and come back and defend myself, repair the extractors if you need to. After you've sorted your perk cards, what you wanna do is you just wanna go ahead and place all of the resource extractors in the deposits, and then just go around and clear all of the bigger objects that may get in your way. You can actually scrap some of these and get materials back from them, which is nice but this is gonna give you more area for your turrets to shoot and you more maneuverability around the workshop. Once you've done that, you just wanna go ahead and place all of your turrets down. I like to go with the cryo turrets because it does slow them down as well as, well as doing a nice bit of damage. You, you will need home defense for at least the cryo turrets, but these don't require power, so it just makes it a lot easier for you. After you've done that, I would recommend putting down a power generator and just start connecting all of the uh, extractors you might need to put a couple of power conduits down just to uh, to stretch the power across across large areas. What I would recommend doing next is placing a platform. So I went with a two by one platform. I picked wood, so it was the cheapest material to make. And then I just put down everything that you can possibly farm in a workshop. So fertilizer, uh, nuka candies, cola, coffee, honey, just everything that I like to farm that you can place in a workshop. Build it on a smallest platform as you can with as cheap as materials as you can. I even put a bed on there just because it's a cheap amount of cloth. But like I say, stash box, scrap box, punch card machine, all of that. Just put everything onto the smallest platform you can. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and enter build mode and make a blueprint. So if you do hold the button, 
that you would use to move objects around. So the select button to select an object. If you press and hold that, it's gonna to start to create a blueprint. As you can see along the bottom, I've got all the buttons. You wanna hit the grow selection button. Now this is gonna basically include everything that is on the platform that you've selected. So if you select just the platform and hit grow selection, it's gonna, everything that's connected to that original platform, you can keep growing and growing and make a big blueprint of that whole thing. So as you can see here, everything that is on the platform is all connected up to the same blueprint. You can then go ahead and save that blueprint, name it something that you're gonna remember later. And once you go to place it, you can see that you can place the whole thing in one go. When you do go to place this in a new workshop, you can see that it is red when you go to place it sometimes, but it will still let you place in some locations. So just run around spamming the button to try and place it and eventually it'll, it'll place. So you know how to set up a workshop and how to lay a blueprint. Now, where do you do this? The first place I did say was Hemlock Holes, but as well as there, I would recommend Charleston Landfill as it does have three junk extractors, which can be good for a lot of materials, as well as some other nice things, and Grafton Steel Yard. Now, Grafton Steel Yard says it has four steel when it actually only has two extractors, but they work double speed and hold double the yield. So they'll produce two instead of one every time and will hold up to 40 instead of 20. You can also get a few challenges around Grafton Steel Yard. As you can see, I got the uh, the targets for the for the daily quest, but you just wanna jump over here and you wanna take it over. As you can see, you're gonna get some more rewards from taking over this place. This is mainly gonna consist of resources and plans. So it's always worth grabbing while you're doing a resource run. Another thing I wanna mention is a few workshops such as Grafton Steel Yard do have a power box. Now what this does is it currently produces 10 power as it is. So you can use this to produce 10 power from your workshop. What you can also do is if you complete the event Power Up Poseidon, this is gonna change from 10 to 100 power output. So you can actually use this to power up all five extractors in Grafton Steel Yard using that one power box. So it is often worth doing power up the energy plants. There is three of them and a lot of workshops will require different ones, but Poseidon seems to be the main one. If you power up Poseidon, you're gonna get 100 free energy for throughout your whole camp. One other thing I wanna say is just make sure you are going around to your camp and other workshops and just collecting the materials that you are farming. So just make sure you go around picking them up and put them in your stash box. There's so many times I've set up a few different workshops and I've been claiming the materials and I've blue screened or crashed or whatever the equivalent would be on PC or, or Xbox. My game has crashed and I've lost the workshops. Obviously I've had to reset them up again, lost all the materials, had to repay for the extractors and stuff. You just wanna try and make sure you collect them often so if it does happen, you've gained the materials. I do wanna say as well from the defense, you're gonna get a lot of resources from the things that you kill, such as acid and stuff from Gulbaz but you are gonna also get some weapons from super mutants and stuff. So it's worth scrapping that down. It's extra resources. This has been the ultimate resource guide. Thank you all for watching. I'm X-Dog. I'll catch you in the next one.